Hi everyone, welcome to this webinar. I'm Mary O'Keefe, I'm Research Projects Officer at EFIC. And this morning we're all in for a treat. We're going to hear about four excellent projects on osteoarthritis that were funded through the EFIC Pfizer Lilly um, scheme on education and pain in osteoarthritis. So before we begin, I'm just going to wait a bit uh, longer to allow more of it, the attendees to, to come online. But during our chat, be, uh, feel free to ask questions, ask them during the talk or ask them at the end, just pop them in the, the chat function and we'll do our best to answer them at the end. So before we begin, I'll just wait a few more minutes. Okay, I think we can begin. So let's start with some introductions. So does everybody want to start by introducing themselves and their project? So maybe we'll start with Francine, you can start us thank, off. Thank you, Mary. Um, and good morning from the UK. My name is Dr. Francine Toy. Um, and I'm a qualitative researcher based at the Oxford University Hospitals NHS Foundation Trust in the UK. Uh, and I'm talking on behalf of my co applicants, Professors Karen Barker and Kate Sears, who are doing not, not uh, yeah, maybe watching, but they're not in the room here. Um, so we have a track record in qualitative research, qualitative evidence synthesis, and qualitative methodologies, amongst other, uh, amongst other things. Um, and the aim of the, the projects that, that it's been funded is to undertake a comprehensive systematic uh, uh, evidence synthesis of qualitative research, public qualitative research. So that we can understand what it's like to live with pain from osteoarthritis. Um, and we, we, we strongly feel that this, this qualitative research, and for those of you who are not familiar with qualitative research, is the kind of research that talks about people's experiences um, of living with, with, with various conditions. And we strongly feel as a team that this knowledge can be used for pain education and, and uh, patient advocacy. Um, and we're going to use the methods of meta-ethnography uh, to bring together qualitative research findings. And this is just one method that, that can be used to synthesize that we're familiar with. Um, we also want to make the knowledge from this evidence synthesis accessible through a, a, an evidence-based qualitative research form, um, which we are going to um, support with educational material that clinicians can use in, um, in pain education. Um, so, um, the rationale for the film, we, we, we really, we've really done other films like this before, um, one of which was about chronic, uh, living with chronic pain, not osteoarthritic, um, and we have really found that it can be a sort of, um, it can make findings accessible without oversimplifying them, and it can also create a, a sort of safe place for dialogue about you know, challenging issues, so very, very useful in, in, in education. Um, Francine, sorry, sorry for interrupting you. Uh, I think there is a problem with the audio. I don't know if you can try to remove your headphone and speak. Okay, do you want to go? Yeah, because look. I think the participants, uh, they, they have problem to listen to you. Yeah. Yes, now I seem to be having trouble. Mary, do you want to move to somebody else while I try and sort something out? Yep, no problem. Uh, Luke, do you want to introduce yourself and your project? Yes, uh, with pleasure, uh, Mary. Um, well, I hope you can all uh, hear me well. Um, yeah, that's fine, good. Um, so um, my name is Luke van Rijsveld. Um, 
I'm uh, representing the, the three parties that, uh, that are part of our, our project, uh, uh, which are uh, ISACAM. Uh, this is a um, educational uh, multidisciplinary uh, society. Um, then we have uh, URACT uh, or URACT, uh, which is the European Ac Academy of Teachers in uh, Family Medicine. Uh, and then we have uh, Wonka Europe, which is the uh, academic society uh, for uh, family medicine doctors. So um, uh, I would say the, uh, the, the, the target group of our project are uh, the family medicine doctors or family medicine in general uh, over Europe, uh, but also uh, beyond because of the fact, of course, that it is an online project. Um, and um, Wonka alone already uh, covers uh, 47 uh, countries in, in, in Europe and over 90,000 uh, GPs. So um, uh, there's, a, there's an important reach. And um, regarding the project, um, it's, it's, it's a project which is um, uh, or constitutes of, of two uh, major elements, I would say one is um, uh, an accredited uh, website platform uh, containing cases. Uh, and the second part is an emailing program that sends out on a regular basis these cases. Um, and um, we're hoping to, uh, of course, improve the understanding and management of pain due to osteoarthritis, because that's, um, that's the subject uh, of our project. Uh, uh, in, in family medicine. And um, I will um, talk to you more about this in, uh, in a few minutes. Great. And Nadia, would you like to tell us about your project? Oh, yes, uh, with uh, a, a great uh, a, a joy and happiness and here with you. I'm Nadia Malu and uh, I am a, a neuropsychologist uh, at trade. And I'm a patient uh, with uh, spondyloarthritis and a patient advocate uh, with uh, the Hellenic League Against Rheumatism, which is actually the coordinator of the project I'm going to be talking about today. And uh, we are here with you today with uh, Professor Bamidis, who is actually a partner, a very important partner for the project. Uh, I'm going to read because I'm not actually, I cannot remember the whole uh, uh, name of the project uh, uh, by heart. It's training and ubiquitous outreach using social innovation and co-designing, uh, co-design of learning resources and digital engagement. This is TUS Include. And TUS Include is the name we will be aiming to for everyone to remember. TUS Include, TUS is French for everyone and include is include, everyone included. So the aim of the project is going to be uh, inclusive. Uh, I'm gonna be talking in detail uh, for this in a few moments. I'm gonna be, let me uh, give a, a moment for Professor Bamidis to introduce himself uh, because he's here with us and uh, I, uh, that's it for me now, okay? Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I hope you can hear me. There is a problem with my camera. And uh, once uh, uh, I introduce myself, I'll try to reboot just in case it will work. Uh, my name is Fanos Blamidis. I'm a professor uh, of uh, medical physics, medical informatics, and medical education at the School of Medicine, uh, Aristotle University of Thessaloniki in Greece. And we basically um, I, I direct the Medical Physics and Digital Innovation Lab uh, with a uh, numerous research groups. Some of them, uh, most of them are dealing with technology, in fact, uh, as is uh, applied to different aspects of uh, clinical research uh, and education in uh, uh, healthcare, patients and professionals included, as well as um, uh, research and services in uh, healthcare. Uh, so um, uh, we are glad that uh, we are given this opportunity with, during this uh, Tools Include project uh, to develop some tools and uh, most of, uh, um, importantly to uh, assist patients 
and in association with uh, Nandi and her colleagues in uh, uh, the Hellenic Human League Against uh, Rheumatism and Arthritis and other important uh, partners, as we will explain, we will try to develop these uh, tools throughout this project and pilot them. Thank you. Super. And finally, Ben, would you like to introduce yourself and your project? Hi everyone, uh, it's great to be here on the webinar this morning. So I'm Ben Wilkins. Um, my background is in MSK Science and Community Re Rehabilitation, and I'm currently completing a fellowship looking at the role of gamification in older adult rehab. Uh, I also have a role as an MSK clinical champion for Versa Arthritis, the leading charity in the UK for MSK and arthritis. Uh, I'm the chair of the MSK expert group for the World Health Innovation Summit. And uh, my key day-to-day -day role is I'm CEO of Good Boost, which is a social enterprise based in the UK. And what Good Boost uh, do and deliver is we work in collaboration with community leisure centres and swimming pools so that they're able to offer personalised aquatic exercise and aquatic rehabilitation programmes uh, on a digital app, which is a medical device, on waterproof tablets. So we applied with the aim of this project to look at how transferable were our results and learnings in the past three years in the UK, working with leisure centres, working with swimming pools that offer a community exercise service to other nations. Uh, so the project was, is working with three EU countries, which is Italy, Kosovo and the Ukraine, with the pain associations in each of those countries. And we're working with them to identify community venues, swimming pools, leisure centres, so that we can uh, have them adopt what we've delivered successfully in the UK. At the end of the project is to work with people living with osteoarthritis so they have uh, affordable and accessible options uh, to manage their condition through physical activity in water and on land. But a key understanding is what needs to what needs to take place to make sure that there are the service can be delivered that's cross-cultural. Um, and this is part of the understanding is what would be needed to grow further than that as well. We know we've been successful in the UK to improve people's uh, reporting of pain, function, quality of life for people living with os osteoarthritis. Um, but we don't believe it's as, as easy as taking the tablets and dropping it in another nation because it's not just an app on someone's phone, it's about working with an existing community asset, an existing community venue, a ledger centre, so they can offer that service which they wouldn't traditionally do. And a lot of that around making that service successful is around peer-led and peer-supported programmes that actually you take part and you join a group who all use the watery tablets together. And it's, it's that emotional side to people's connection uh, and feeling emotionally supported as well as practically supported in the personalised exercise programme, which is so important. We're trying to understand and capture that. The overall aim by doing that is to capture baseline data and follow-up data as people come through and use the apps uh, so we can then evaluate that to understand uh, was there a clinically meaningful uh, important difference in people's uh, pain function and quality of life as they attend these venues in both the UK, Kosovo, uh, Ukraine and Italy. That's great, thanks Ben. Okay so that's four really exciting projects so now we move on to the really exciting bit just to ask you about the status of the projects and the results so francine if we go back to you again if you have missed anything that you wanted to say earlier you can say it now and you can also comment on the status of your project anything you want thank you i'm not quite sure where you got to last time and can you hear me yes okay um um, that's great. So just a very, very brief recap then, because uh, I'm not quite sure where people could hear to. Um, uh, the aim is to undertake a comprehensive uh, synthesis of qualitative research so that we can really get patients' voices um, into, uh, into pain education. Um, and from that, we will make a short film uh, and develop educational resources um, that clinicians can use in education. So that's the, that's the brief recap. Um, we're very early on in our project. We only started in March. We're funded from March, so it's early days. Um, but what we have achieved so far, it, um, we have done a comprehensive search of the qualitative literature, um, and qualitative research uh, um, synthesis tend to be very large searches. So you get thousands and thousands of kits when you try and, when you try and find things. Um, we've searched four bibliographic databases using the search terms that we've developed on previous projects that have been really successful for finding these sorts of things. Um, and from thousands of titles, we've screened, we've looked at more than 500 abstracts, um, and we've identified 139 studies, uh, which is, again, a very, very large qualitative evidence synthesis. 
Um, we are at the currently what we're doing um, is we are appraising those uh, studies um, and we're in the process of extracting the data and we're up to about 80 studies that we've extracted the data from so quite a lot of uh, we're, we're well within target um, well within our targets to meet the, um, meet the, the, the deadline for analysis and, and it's been a good time for making the film and resources um, which I could say a little bit about the, the sorts of studies we're finding just very briefly. A lot of them um, cover the experience of hip, knee and mixed osteoarthritis. Um, there are fewer that, that, that um, explore single conditions such as hand osteoarthritis um, and a body of work that explores people's decision making about whether to have um, surgery as well. Um, so that's where we are. We've got a lot of a lot of data um, and lots of really rich narrative that we hope to make a, a, a very compelling short film that can be used. That's great. Thank yeah, that's you. Nice. I hope you can hear me okay now. Thanks yeah, for your patience. We can. That that sounds like a great project, and it's quite big. And I don't think we have those reviews in osteoarthritis. You know, we have a lot of that in chronic back pain. So it'll be great to bring those methods here. So that's great. And. Thank you. Luke, if you want to talk about the status of your project and results, if you have them. Um, well, results not yet. Um, so uh, we uh, also started the program, uh, I would say from the moment that we uh, got, uh, got the approval, um, but it's, it's a large project. So uh, it means that we are uh, covering, uh, I would say the entity of, uh, of Europe, uh, of European countries. So, um, but we did do uh, quite a lot. Um, so the, the purpose of our um, project is that uh, we want to bring um, uh, knowledge, know-how about uh, pain management due to osteoarthritis uh, into family medicine. Um, uh, but we do this by uh, case-based education um, because case-based education is something which is very much appreciated uh, everywhere. Um, and, and the purpose, of course, is to translate uh, all available evidence, and there is, of course, a lot of information and a lot of evidence there, um, but to translate this to, the, to daily practice. And um, to do so, uh, we have uh, built, created uh, a method uh, throughout the years, um, and, and we call it mirrors of medicine, and so you can mirror yourself uh, to um, a, um, a panel of experts, um, uh, to your peers uh, and to the available uh, evidence. Um, so uh, by uh, creating a case, uh, we make sure that uh, this case is, um, of course, um, very recognizable. It is short. Um, it contains all the information you need, but not more. Uh, you have a couple of options uh, to choose from uh, what you would do with this specific patient. And by choosing for an option, you will immediately all also see uh, what your peers uh, would do with this patient, what a panel of experts uh, recommend uh, for this patient. And they do this for each of the options, not just saying this is what you should do, but they uh, give a uh, on a scale from one to nine, one being highly inappropriate uh, to nine highly appropriate a score for each of the options and then of course you get also all the supporting evidence well not all uh, but um, uh, a very concise uh, selection of the most important evidence for that specific case together with uh, the most important references uh, for that case these cases are um, on a platform, uh, this platform, this website is EACME accredited. So it's accredited by the uh, European body of accreditation, meaning because of the robustness of the method that everything which is coming on the, on the platform is automatically uh, accredited. And you will need to do uh, after doing uh, uh, at least five cases, an assessment. And if you have 70%, uh, then you get the European credit, which you can transform into a national credit. Um, that's one part of the story. The other uh, part is, of course, if you have a website, if you have a platform, um, you can put, of course, uh, anything on it like as you want, but you need to get people onto that platform. That's, that's usually um, uh, the most difficult task. Um, 
So uh, we work with what we call a weekly case. Uh, these are clinical cases uh, that are on the platform, but that we send out on a weekly or bi-weekly basis to the community. Um, and um, the, 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 the big advantage, of course, of working with, with Wonka Europe and with URAC is that you already have this huge community of uh, uh, general practitioners, family medicine doctors all over Europe uh, that you can reach uh, on a very regular level. And they just get a, an email with nothing else but the case in their mailbox. They can have a look at it. It will take you one minute, two minutes, not more. So we believe very much in, um, uh, in the short uh, educational moments. Doctors, as you all know, uh, don't have a lot of time uh, and they like to do some education when it suits. So um, if they have two time, uh, two minutes uh, time waiting for the elevator or being in the elevator um, or in between to, um, to, uh, to consult, they, they can do this. If they have more time, they can do a second case, a third case, a fourth case. Um, and and uh, these small niblets uh, continuously um, helps them to 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 uh, to to keep uh, on track. Um, of course, they are continuously updated, and and while clicking on that weekly case, they immediately uh, come onto the platform because the case is on the platform, uh, and on the platform they can do then more cases if they want. So it's it's really a system that um, that um, keeps you. Uh, in the program um, on a continuous basis, rather than having a website and hoping that people come to your come to your website. Um, so where are we now? Well, um, we send out a survey to do a needs assessment um, to all the, the countries which are member. Um, uh, we usually work via the UREC the country representatives uh, to contact them, and we ask them what their needs were in terms of uh, pain due, due to osteoarthritis, uh, if they were willing to participate uh, in creating the cases or in testing uh, the cases. And uh, upon that, we built a working group of uh, 12 um, uh, general practitioners who are now uh, part of the, uh, I would say, organizing committee, creating the cases, coming together, uh, meeting, um, and, and, and building uh, actually those cases. Um, on top of that, we have a, a larger testing group who will uh, also test all those cases and see whether they are representative, clear, um, and that they cover uh, the entire fields. Of course, we will also need to um, clearly establish the topics which we will be covering, uh, like diagnosis, uh, uh, non-medical uh, management, medical management, um, the follow-up, referral, and so on. Um, and to be also uh, clearly uh, uh, in line with what uh, experts, of course, would be recommending, thinking, and so on, we also uh, we'll have a consulting um, expert panel of specialists um, in pain management, um, rheumatology, anesthesiology, uh, that will guide and consult throughout the process. And um, normally we should have uh, the first uh, batch of cases ready uh, by the end of July, having them reviewed by, let's say, uh, the end of August, uh, and having the entire program ready uh, before the end of the year uh, so that we can start dissemination uh, via all the different countries um, to the uh, communities of, uh, of family medicine. And um, we count on the one uh, hand, uh, of course, uh, uh, on, the, on the Wonka community, uh, who is already a big community, a big database, uh, but on the other hand, also on the national societies of uh, family medicine, uh, who uh, we would like to support this program and provide their national community of family medicine doctors uh, with this uh, program. It's, it's, it's free, it's available. So we very much like uh, this initiative and the support from, uh, from uh, EFIC and the Pfizer Lilly. Uh, alliance uh, grant um, that allows us to do this um, to do this project.
That's fantastic. That's another very big project as well. And I like the, yes. the method um, that's new for osteoarthritis, I think. Great. And we'll move on to Nadia and Panagitis. I hope I have the pronunciation right, uh, correct. So just tell us about an update of the project and if any results. Okay, so before moving on to an update, just let me briefly introduce you to, the, to, my, to our partners and a little bit about the program. So apart from the Aristotle University and uh, the Medical Physics Lab, uh, we are happy to work with the Hellenic Society for, uh, of Algology. Uh, uh, the uh, Arthritis and Rheumatism League Aram from Malta and uh, the League Against Rheumatism from Cyprus. This is very, very important because uh, we have uh, um, a very good representation from healthcare professionals and patient advocates in the program. So as to, for the program to be inclusive. So the aim of the program itself to include, uh, aims to <coughs> integrate contemporary evidence-based digital and physical intervention, education and outreach approaches into a patient-centered and health-supported digitally enhanced and socially innovative platform that will empower the patient, facilitate the health healthcare professional and engage the social environment of both for optimal pain management, treatment, and overall quality of life, quality of life with osteoarthritis. So, in order to do that, we wanted to start by doing a gap analysis. For us to be able to pinpoint what are the gaps, what are the things that are missing, and what actually we actually need to do. The gap analysis is already done. We do have uh, the data uh, in our hands, and we do have quantity and qualitative data, because we thought that we don't only use, we, we, can, we need to have a narrative. As Francine already said, the narrative of the people that are going to be involved in the project is very, very important to us. So data shows, as a theory shows, the background, the review shows that uh, even though there are protocols and gu guidelines and uh, 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 pain management for uh, pain in osteoarthritis needs to be done in, uh, in steps and non-pharmacological treatment needs to be done first and then pharmacological treatment needs to follow. Actually, in everyday uh, uh, clinical practice, both healthcare professionals and patients do it the other way around. First, uh, the medication and then uh, all, all the other things, uh, exercise, alternative therapies, and everything else that could be useful and um, uh, uh, therapeutic. So uh, having this data now, we are moving on. We're going to be going on with the project for the co-creation uh, uh, step, which is very, very important to us because the co-creation part is going to bring both healthcare professionals and patients together. Uh, actually, not together, together physically, maybe in the near future, but virtually, of course, because this is the part we are going to, to use to move on to the creation of the virtual patient scenarios and the extra games we are going to implement in the in the M Health application, Professor Bamidis maybe want to wants to talk a bit more. Uh, at the moment, we have also done uh, five uh, six webinars with uh, more than six or seven thousand views already in Greece and Cyprus, and these webinars are going to be translated into the Maltese language for the Maltans. Okay, for the Maltese people. And we have uh, healthcare professionals from both Greece and Cyprus participating in these webinars and patients participating. So as part of the project, we need to engage both uh, parts, healthcare professionals and patients in these webinars as the educational and learning procedure of the project, because we are going to use all these training and educational staff for the later part of the project, because then we are aiming to create, create 
patient ambassadors. The patient ambassadors will be uh, very engaged and very motivated patients who are going to be um, uh, to be the ones to create micro communities. The micro communities could be physical if uh, the post pandemic uh, um, situation will allow for it. But with the M Health application, of course, we will be able to do it. So the M Health application will give uh, room to do it. And the micro communities will be able to give us room to spread it out. Okay, so tools include everyone will be included and everyone will be able to use it. And the final aim of the project will be better management, better pain management, better quality of life for everyone. And healthcare professionals are included because facilitating them to help the patients is making everyone's life better and easier. Yes, because better outcomes is better outcomes for everyone, not only the uh, patient uh, itself, for the healthcare professional too, because the gap analysis showed that even healthcare professionals, they do not care, the narrative says, that they do not care only for uh, giving out the prescription or having a good outcome at the, at paper, on paper. They need to have a good outcome when the patient comes back and says, I'm feeling better. This is a better situation for me. Okay, so the gap analysis showed that everyone needs to do better. So this is the aim of tools include. Okay, and we're going to do it through the M Health application. That's it. For me. Great. Yeah, I really like the sound of the micro community idea. Um, yeah, yeah. It's a bit optimistic if you if you think that the target audience is patients with osteoarthritis because they are not very very young. So you cannot imagine a sixty year old with osteoarthritis is not a, a young audience. Okay, but um, people said in the interviews because the the quality analysis said uh, I showed that. If you train them to do it, if you show them how to do it, even uh, especially now, because we are, at, uh, we are amidst the pandemic situation, especially now, if you show them how to do it, they will engage, but we will need the patient ambassadors and the healthcare professionals to be engaged too, because they will, they will be the ones to spread the news, as we say, yeah? There will be the ones to be engaged and do it and show the others how to do it. So it's going to be, uh, uh, this is the micro community who is going to open up then. Okay. Super. Yeah. It sounds very, uh, very exciting method. Yeah. And uh, Ben, we move on to you next. Any results or even to give uh, us Sorry, can can we give uh, the the oh sure Mr. Bamidis just uh, if he's if he wants to add something uh, for the yeah. M Health application because he he's the expert here, <laughs> okay? If he if he has something to say, just uh... yeah, sure. If you want, I also can share a couple of slides, uh, just not too uh, too much in terms of time, but uh, it might help. Just a moment, give me one second. So tools include uh, is uh, training and ubiquitous outreach using social innovation and co-design of learning resources and digital engagement. I hope you can see my screen, yes? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Okay, so it's basically, it comes from ideas of uh, self-monitoring with, you know, different uh, uh, tools uh, uh, and uh, gadgets like uh, smart watches and stuff like that, uh, and the, the world of what we call now in M Health digital therapeutics, uh, stuff like that. We do similar work uh, with uh, patients uh, with cancer at the moment, uh, and we are trying to not the identical, of course, but uh, some uh, elements of uh, this work are also fused in there and also coaching systems uh, for people having uh, specific needs, et cetera. These are some of the uh, projects that we have just completed or we are still running. Now, the, uh, 
mobile apps in managing pain have been problematic, although there are a lot of uh, publications stemming uh, from this uh, world. There are problems like uh, no um, limited utility, not holistic approach, unsuitable for clinical use, etc. as the, some recent publications reveal. And we had uh, the luxury of uh, and experiences of uh, uh, a previous project called Relief, uh, which actually uh, developed uh, some parts of the M Health app that was uh, tested in Spain, Sweden, and France, and we have uh, collaborated with uh, an informatics company to create that one uh, with the help of uh, uh, Leana, the uh, human, uh, the Hellenic Human League uh, Patient Association. Uh, and uh, this is where we are stepping upon now the experiences that we have got for this uh, first uh, prototype for uh, patient uh, uh, under pain and the management of pain. Uh, so stepping upon this, we are trying now to expand and uh, utilize that uh, in daily use for patients, uh, tracking and uh, taking care of the goals that they can put, uh, having a, a health agenda and medication management, as well as interactive educational episodes and also tracking pain symptoms throughout the time. And so basically that would uh, essentially uh, put us in uh, uh, the atmosphere of uh, preparing something that will be utilized by patients and also doctors, because we also have uh, uh, clinical uh, partners in, uh, in, the in the project as well. I'm not gonna bother you too much, but. Uh, the essence of what we are doing is that uh, the data that we want to be able to uh, utilize and create are going to drive us in, during the time in uh, uh, studying the analytics of uh, these interactions, the daily care, etc., which will in time provide uh, useful and probably um, new knowledge about the, the topic. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, we, apart from the usual uh, elements of uh, creating uh, such a thing, uh, we would like to see uh, all these tools that you can see and the interactions to be co-created. Uh, what does co-creation mean? Co-creation means that the users are not seen as outsiders, but uh, not, and not only as participants, but also providing ideas and owning part of the application, basically. That will increase its use, its compliance in use, and hopefully improve the outcomes. And this is what we embark with the patient associations, not only to disseminate as it's usually, it's usually done, but co-create these uh, expansions of the app that we have together so that it can become a, a very, very useful tool at the end of the day. So we will use collaborative labs, structured interactions, collaborative and creativity tools, uh, of suitable duration so that they are not exhaustive uh, for anyone. Uh, enough though to provide useful information in designing all the informatics elements of uh, yeah. And uh, we are just at the start now. We are sort of trying to complete some parts of the initial development, uh, pre prepare these grounds that uh, we can have these collaborative labs and the structured interaction so that we can then um, co-create the final version of the app and pilot it uh, with patient associations. Uh, stop sharing so that I can give some more time to the others. Thank you. That's great. And it's great to see patients being involved earlier in the research as opposed to just at the end. Great. And we'll move on to Ben, if you want to give us a status update or if you have any results, that would be great. Uh, thank you very much, Mary. So uh, our status update is, um, without a doubt, I know we're moving on to COVID impacts as the next question, but uh, uh, we've been delayed in COVID in launching. So uh, we're launching next month uh, in the UK with um, quite a few venues, so there's commuter swimming pools to deliver in. Um, we're preparing for a couple of venues in Kosovo the month after that. Um, there have been delays both in the Ukraine and Italy caused by COVID, um, but we're working with the pain associations of each, country, each country to work out what is the best way forward to make sure that we can deliver something or we can uh, divert resources to another venue, to another place to make sure we can still capture enough data and support uh, and include enough subjects on this project. Um, so at the moment we have no data to review, that won't happen to the end of the project. Um, but I think one of the key things to raise on this is part of our learning around 
I completely agree about the importance of co-design and co-production. And we've done a lot of focus groups, a lot of learning with people living with uh, osteoarthritis and other MSK conditions, is that it's clear that apps alone and digital solutions alone are not the, uh, are, are not, are not the panacea. They are not the grand solution. The reason for that is ultimately for, for any of the, um, Orca, who are one of the um, reviewers of medical technology uh, based in the UK, and I think they highlight that there are around 300,000 digital apps for health and well-being um, on the app stores. 300,000. If digital solutions were going to be the pan panacea, um, I would imagine one of them would have made that difference yet, and yet we're seeing a continued increase in non-communicable diseases, a continued increase in, in a, a musculoskeletal disorders. The, the, I think part of the challenge there is that these digital solutions are seen as short-term interventions. And for a lot of the conditions we're seeing in the 21st century, we need lifestyle change. And so as a result, the value proposition from these solutions need to move away from a six to 12 week intervention to here is a new way of looking at life, interacting with people and having a lifestyle that's changed around that. So I think that's one of the key things that we're looking at into the project is that we don't want individuals that engage and subjects to engage with this to see this any different to going for a weekly swim or going for their weekly to, um, session to meet a friend for coffee. But actually, they're doing some activity personalized because we know that physical activity and rehab is one of the key things in terms of clinical effectiveness and cost effectiveness for treating osteoarthritis and MSK conditions. So, um, yes, digital is important, and that's why we use our technology and tablets. But the key thing is exactly what you mentioned about micro communities, where we can create an emotional link and emotional support through digital technology so that people feel they want to continue that interaction is critical. Why are the most successful apps on the App Star or social media or game related? Because they create a repetitive emotional um, response. If we can figure out how to capture that in digital solutions and self-management solutions, then actually people will people will self-manage their condition like osteoarthritis because they want to do it rather than being told to do it by a clinician or a physiotherapist. And I think that's the shift that we need to see. And that's what we're hoping to understand some of that in the project too. That's great. And I'm sure even Francine's work with the narrative insights and the qualitative insights probably feeds into how, you know, to look at the barriers to self-management and enablers and, and so on. That's great. So now we move on to COVID and next steps around projects. Whoever wants to talk about has COVID had an impact on your project and what are your next steps? Francine, would you like to, to start us off? If, if has COVID had an impact, what do you plan to do? <laughs> Uh, yes, certainly. And just just to just to backtrack a little bit on what Ben was saying is really, really interesting because um, I suppose one of the, the sort of rationales and underpinnings of all the work we do, and there is there's huge amounts of qualitative research out there, and I think it's not always being drawn upon um, to look at some of these these exact things, Ben, that you're talking about. Um, and we, you know, I just really hope that we, you know, by using a pill, you, you, you can you can get quite a big impact. I mean, on our previous film on chronic pain, living with chronic pain, we've had thousands of people look at that. Um, and I really think that, you know, we all do on the research team, um, you know, that's just so important for, for tapping into why people make the choices that they make. So that, that was really interesting then. Um, so in terms of COVID, um, I mean, one of the, the great sort of, I suppose you could say, pleasures of these sort of large evidence synthesis is that actually COVID at this stage, these early stages, hasn't had any impact at all, um, because it's a matter of finding and reading and extracting ideas out of things. Um, so in that regard, we've really, you know, in many ways, we may even have uh, um, got slightly ahead of schedule because of the, uh, you know, the, additional non-traveling time, that kind of thing. Um, I suppose the, the thing that we need, we want to be more sort of vigilant about now is that um, we are including patient partners, particularly in the analytical phase of this, which we're not at yet. Um, but we will be working with a couple of um, uh, patient partners to, to actually do the analysis with us and particularly be involved in looking at the script of the film um, and we will need to do that slightly differently than we would normally, which we normally do in face to face. Um, 
ha having said that, I think this year has given us all loads more. You know, it's been a steep learning curve for everyone, and it's like, for like example, today it's given us some skills that have opened up the world. In fact, um, you know, we're talking to people around the world that we might not have been able to. So, so we'll, we'll be changes, but I don't think it will have a, a, a significant impact. Um, in terms of the filming, um, which will be planned around sort of April, um, we may have to think about depending on what's going on in the world, locations, and what we, you know, how we do that. But, but again, it's a it would be a, a small cast, and, and I, I don't think that we will feel significant impacts there. So we're, we're very lucky, really, with this type of project. Um, I know that people working in all scientific research have been hit massively um, um, by this, so all good. Yeah, all good. It yeah, it really depends on the study design. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it, yeah, uh, and even qualitative, uh, any qualitative projects, they can, you know, they're now happening um, virtually, but they, but they can still happen. Uh, yep. this, yeah. Great. How about you, Luke? Have you been, has your work been impacted by COVID and what are your next plans? Well, um, with, with ISACAM, um, we started the pinpoint case program already end of 2018. Uh, so we already had uh, a lot of experience in urology, uh, prostate cancer, bladder cancer, renal cell cancer, um, uh, breast cancer, uh, COVID-19 as a, as, a, as a disease area itself. So all these were already covered, uh, meaning that we already build up a expertise routine in um, how, to, uh, how to build up these, these, these programs. And of course, we do have the, um, the, uh, the advantage that, that it is an, an online program. Um, uh, so I would say that... Um, there was, of course, the um, the uh, the difficulty of uh, family medicine doctors um, that were um, uh, affected by uh, by COVID nineteen, having a lot of work, uh, having little time, um, being disrupted uh, in their uh, in their daily practice, in their agendas. So availability was maybe a bit uh, less, um, but. You know, as, as we work anyhow with, with uh, many different countries, um, I would almost say uh, it, it has become an advantage that all of us became familiar with, uh, with this type of Zoom meetings uh, and Teams and, and, and all these uh, virtual meetings, which makes it so much easier to interact uh, when you're working with a lot of nationalities and a lot of countries together in one project. You, you can't you can't travel all the time anyhow so um uh, in this case i would say um yes it was a problem for uh, availability of uh, of the participating doctors on, on on the one side but on the other hand i mean um we have been uh become so comfortable with with uh with meeting online and using these online tools that um that that yeah, I, I wouldn't say we were too much impacted by by COVID um, in um, in in the uh, development of uh, of the project. So um, I'm I'm pretty sure that uh, before the, the 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 year ends, uh, the the pinpoint case program will um, be able to um, disseminate uh, all these cases on uh, pain due to osteoarthritis into the different countries uh, and, and the family medicine doctors of these countries. So um, I think it's, um, it's going okay. That's great, great to hear. How about you, Nadia and Panagitis? Any huge setbacks due to COVID? Uh, uh, not uh big huge uh delays to our project and to our uh, uh timeline for the project uh, i i've had during the interviews some not uh, there were not like complaints from the patients or the doctors i've had some remarks that would some of them would uh, like would like to have the interview 
face to face because they feel it's more personal, even though it's could it could be as personal uh, through the the virtual environment of a computer. Uh, we've actually managed to have. Uh, uh, I didn't say before, we have completed our educational, five educational videos with healthcare professionals just recently, last week, uh, which took uh, many, many hours to complete. And this was done because uh, the participants were just fully vaccinated. So it was uh, possible to be done. And uh, no delays and vodcasts are being done and website is uh, prepared. Uh, no, actually, uh, we are on time because after all, it's a, it's a mobile application we are uh, preparing. It's, it's, a, it's a digital environment we are going to be implementing. So this is the environment we are going to be building on. Yes, so this is the environment we are trying patients and healthcare professionals to, to be engaging and to be using more and more. So uh, this is the environment we want them to use. It's going to be lifting uh, uh, distances and time limits, and uh, it's going to be making it easier for everyone to communicate. Communication between healthcare professionals and patients is a big, big issue. So this make it may make it easier for them. Sounds good. And Ben, you said you had delays due to to COVID. Do you want to? expand on, on those for us? Uh, essentially because the, the project we're delivering is in person in physical community venues in all four nations that are part of the project um, so as a result there has been an impact on that not just not just in the availability of these venues because some of them have had restricted access or they've had to be closed to public access um, but also because of each of the project partners in, in Italy, Kosovo and uh, the Ukraine who have been fantastic and brilliant but the reality is, is they are also clinical uh, clinical professionals so the pressures on their time um, because of COVID has been impacted and as a result um, to, to identify the venues there, to, to identify those locations. Um, but we've been working with them and we completely appreciate that because we've had identical challenges in the UK too. Um, so we're now working with them to, to look at hopefully with, um, with the improvement of situation, the vaccination rollout and the reopening of some of community venues such as swimming pools, leisure centres, rehabilitation centres that we can uh, start delivering uh, start delivering the project in person in each of those nations by the end of the summer um, but we're working with each country we're being um, flexible and uh, responsive to the situation that changes uh, to deliver the best that we can I, I we're not concerned about um, delivering in hopefully all but if not some of the nations um, that are involved in the project. Uh, we have no concerns about uh, data collection and, and having people living with osteoarthritis to take part in these programs um, but without a doubt, the uh, the timelines have been uh, have to we have to just have to adapt to the situation that was unfolding in the EU. Okay. Thanks so much, everybody. That was uh, fantastic. We have time for one to two questions. Um, so I'm going to ask the first one. I'm just putting this out to the group. So a lot of the projects discussed are trying to encourage self management lifestyle. They're more of an educational approach to osteoarthritis. Nadia, you mentioned that drugs are initially thought of first as the treatment for osteoarthritis um, before education and exercise and other stuff. So I just want to ask you all, what are the main beliefs among people with osteoarthritis that you think pose a challenge to the education or self-management that you guys might be trying to encourage among patients? What are the main beliefs that are out there about osteoarthritis? If anybody wants to, has any opinion on that. Nadia, do you have a? Yeah, because I am actually a patient with osteoarthritis and uh, it, it tends to be um, thought of as a, as a less important on, or less serious clinical condition. Some, sometimes even thought of uh, as uh, being part of something else. I have a rheumatic disease, 
and osteoarthritis is on top. It's it's a it's it's a separate thing. You can have a patient only having osteoarthritis. This doesn't mean that he has to have something else. He can only or she can only have osteoarthritis. It it doesn't have to be with something else. It ha it can be on its own first, and then it can be more or even uh, uh, bigger, uh, it can be debilitating even more from the other condition. Because you, you don't actually, you cannot diagnose it uh, early. It doesn't show on an X-ray early. Uh, you cannot prove it early. Uh, it, you have to wait many, many years to show in an X-ray or some way. If you're very young, Nobody's gonna believe you have osteoarthritis. You have to be uh, like waiting for many, many years. And um, it's debilitating. The pain is debilitating. And there is a misconception that if you have osteoarthritis, the pain is not very, very serious. It can be dealt with. You can, you can live with it. It's not so serious. You can you can wait for it, or you can live with it. Okay, this is a misconception. The pain from osteoarthritis can be very serious, and if you have a flare with your osteoarthritis, let's say from the hip, you cannot even sit down, or you cannot walk straight. And this is ha this has to be taken seriously. And even doctors do not treat it as seriously. It has to be treated. And we patients and doctors have to treat it more seriously. So this is a misconception and everybody needs to be more careful and treat it more carefully. This I am taking as a patient now, and not only as a patient advocate, but as a patient myself, just, just for everyone to hear. Thanks, Nadia. Does anybody else have any other comments on that question? Well, in, in the in, in the survey that we did and we were asking for um, what, how problematic are some of the areas we, we would like to cover, it is true that the, the, uh, the non-pharmacological approach of, of, of chronic pain management uh, comes out as being uh, a problematic uh, topic, uh, more than the pharmacological approach. So in that case... Um, uh, I think it is um, it, it is a part that probably needs to be um, elaborated, uh, yeah, uh, more importantly, and maybe sometimes is a bit forgotten. Um, so uh, I think in that case, it's very important that we will listen to uh, the different um, doctors in different countries to see. How they how they work with this specific uh, um, non medical um, management of um, of pain um, that probably will become one of the uh, main areas to address as well. Thanks, Luke. Okay, that was an um, excellent overview of all the projects. I'm just going to spend the last two minutes just giving a quick note to our attendees about the academy education platform in case anybody is interested in improving their knowledge of, of pain. So I'm just going to, to share my screen and just share some slides um, briefly. Uh, does Eddie, everybody see my screen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. So just to give a, a, a background to the EFIC Academy, online education initiatives are becoming more and more important, particularly since the start of COVID but also in the post COVID-19 era, online education will probably be here to stay. And it's of particular importance to medical professionals. They're very busy. They need to keep up with continuous professional development all the time. So it's very good to have an online platform where they can get this information. So what is the EFIC Academy? So we have a comprehensive multi-professional education program there is dedicated content for physicians, physiotherapists, psychologists, and nurses. It's targeted towards individual healthcare professionals. So anyone that's interested in improving their knowledge on pain. 
and you also you get access to educational projects but also you get discounts so if you're attending the EFIC congress the virtual pain education summit and the EFIC pain exam so there's discounts provided for all of those and the current benefits so you've open access to very high quality material you can get free attendance to the EFIC virtual pain education summit 10% reduction off of the EFIC Congress registration fee, 25% reduction off the pain exams, and just an opportunity overall to learn from leaders. And currently there's over 120 sessions on the education platform. It's tailored to the EFIC curricula. So whether you're a physiotherapist, psychologist, physician, nurse, the information is tailored to your needs. There is a huge wealth of expertise involved and all of these people contribute to creating the, the content. The pricing varies from three euro a month if you're a student, if you're an allied professional, six um, euro 25 cent a month, if you're a physician from a, a low or middle income country, seven euro a month, and if you're a physician from a high income country or um, or related to pharmaceutical or med tech professionals is 12 euro um, a month. So I just wanted to finish on that last note before thanking everybody for attending to feel free to attend, to visit this website if you're interested in joining the Academy. So it's academy.europeanpainfederation.eu. So thank you for everybody to, for attending this webinar and to our great speakers for telling us about the projects and we'll on top of these for results and hopefully we'll see them next year or the year after thank you very much thank you thank you thank you thank you